Hi there. Welcome back to the north coast of the Dominican Republic. You're here with Barry. Um, it's nice to see a lot of things are opening back up, um, even on a partial schedule. But it is uh, promising to see by um, end, month end, uh, I expect things to get back to, I don't like the new term, a new normal, but to uh, progressive, uh, progressively starting again. Listen, I want to bring your attention to a couple of short clips here. Uh, one's off of Russia today, and the other one's out of Australia. I like to, um, if I'm going to look at medias, I like to scout medias in other countries doing stories about my own country. I find... Uh, which is what I often so uh, I say so often is uh, separation creates clarity, and I find when you get your news sources separate from your home country, it creates a lot of clarity. And uh, I want to show a couple of quick clips about uh, why I say everything's a various shade of gray, and we don't know really uh, the future. Uh, you know, what is supposed to prevail is going to prevail. If enough people say enough is enough and stand up, we're going to have one uh, type of future. If if not, we're going to have another. And uh, there's no question around that. Have a quick look, though, at these two clips and you'll see I uh, get a better understanding of what I mean. There's fresh outrage tonight over video showing police in Buffalo, New York, pushing a man to the ground and walking away as he lies bleeding. The incident comes on a day that had been marked by largely peaceful protests across the country. Approaching police after curfew, an elderly protester is shoved to the ground. An officer pauses to check on him, but is swiftly moved along as his colleagues keep walking. Another demonstrator tries and fails to reach the 75-year-old lying motionless on the pavement. Back up, back up, back up. You better get an ambulance for him. A Buffalo police statement initially claimed he tripped and fell, but after this phone footage was released, two officers were suspended. The man is in a stable condition in hospital. In New York City, too, police brutality is in the spotlight. Today, thousands came together, filing across Brooklyn Bridge. George Floyd's brother among them. I'm proud of the protests, but I'm not proud of the destruction. In the nation's capital, police retreated, sparking a drastic change in the mood. Local authorities in a turf war with federal agencies who had locked down the area since Monday. When they pushed out onto a DC street, uh, that was that is too far. Uh, and that is what we push back on. We want the military we want troops from out of state, out of Washington, D.C. With more questions and dissent over the president's use of the military, the attorney general was unapologetic about the sheer number of boots on the ground and their tactics. There are extremist agitators who are hijacking the protests to pursue their own separate and violent agenda. While the police presence is much less visible today, these streets are still swarming with law enforcement agencies and there are more than 1,500 active duty US troops on standby nearby with calls for more than a million people to march on the Capitol this weekend. We need to change the world, we need to change America. In the reflection of the Washington Monument tonight, the sense that change is finally in motion. In Washington, D.C., Amelia Adams, Nine News. I'm going to switch it right over to the other video, and uh, we'll take it on the other side from there, okay? It's a short video from Russia Today. And what we're doing here is we're protecting and controlling our neighborhood. After the riots started out in South Minneapolis, we made a conscious decision while the police were handling that over there that we were going to come together as, as men of our community and protect our buildings here and protect our families and our children. Cool. Cry on your way home. The bill's right here beside you. Oh, there we go. So I came out here because it's about damn time that, you know, guys like me, guys that, you know, would be viewed as just a heavily armed redneck and stuff like that, stood with fellow citizens, regardless of race, regardless of whether we were in the same local community or not. It's time we stand together. 
Well, there you have two different perspectives, uh, two different states, and uh, the same nation. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I like looking from a big perspective back into the box instead of from the box out. I find you get better stories, and I find, uh, even though they are mass medias, I find medias like out of Australia and Russia uh, and uh, parts of Europe are going to give you a different view of what's happening in your home country. I know it works for Canada. It works equally well for America. Anyway, getting back to it, uh, if by now you can't see how ridiculous things have become, uh, where you have people in uniform dancing with people in Congo lines that are protesters, and as if that makes it better, makes the situation better. It's all a form of mind control. It's just getting the people to go along with what the superiors want. Listen, let me tell you something frankly, and it's uh, I don't care at what level you're at, but it's highly unlikely an individual is going to understand anything when their paycheck is dependent upon them not understanding. Okay, Repeat that to yourself, okay? And then you'll understand why none of this makes sense. It is what's going to happen when push comes to shove. Are they still going to be in the conga line, or are they going to be bashing your head with clubs? I don't know. See, all I know is none of it makes sense. So now, all of a sudden, a few days later, you hear nothing about this pandemic. Remember, it was a pandemic. That's geographic. It's not talking about an illness. It was definitely no more deadly than a normal flu. Uh, except with certain uh, indications on pre-existing conditions in the elderly. Uh, and here we are, it's all but forgotten, and now we're back into the violence, and now the violence is into the hundreds of thousands, like we said it would be. So I want you guys to remember, we're affected too, okay? But my, my, my goal was to always bring out to people, it's not the correct question to ask, will I be affected? We all are. We have to wear masks to get into a little grocery store. In some of them, most of them, no. But we have restrictions and certain things are a little bit harder to find than they were. The question we always told you to ask yourself is, to what degree will you be affected? Okay, We're affected out here, too, in, in our little region of the North Coast here. but. Like I say, we still have plenty of supplies, and if it rains, which we could use some, but that's another story, you know, it rains, it makes grass, the cows eat the grass, the chickens eat the worms, the chickens lay the eggs, the cows make the meat, and life just goes on. It's uh, to what degree? Trust me, I know we fit that one correctly, and I think many of my viewers are really ex uh, will agree with that at this point now. All right, we're going to continue on forwarding and uh, pertinent information, but uh, action is what it's going to take, and on a group basis and on a personal basis. So get this out there, and remember, it's never all good or bad. Just like you could see people starting to change their ways and come together and say, it's time to put our differences aside. It's time to put where we live aside. It's time to put our colors aside and our beliefs aside and come together. And then you have the armed thugs. And on the other side, some of those. So you see, it's pyramids within pyramids. For all people that like to talk on a top-down basis of power, which it is, it's pyramids within pyramids. When you start to grasp that idea, you'll start to understand a whole lot more about how this big old transmission works. Anyway, it's old Barry. Have a great day. Thanks for spreading the word, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.